Talk to me about the process here, because uh, from what I understand, you send in tapes, you get this call back, you, and they say, come yeah. to the world. WWE, it was like the, the restaurant, right? Was it the restaurant for mm. WWF at the time? Yeah, Times right? Square, it was. Mm -hmm. So so you get we this called call it back. WWE. We called it, at the time, everybody just knew it as, as WWF New York. It was York, technically right. the world, that's but we right. just, it was, yeah, we all called it WWF New York. So, so you get this call back to WWF New York. There's there's several hundred <laughs> people there. There's thousands <laughs> there, whatever it is. And uh, so what's your approach? What's your approach going into that? So obviously, I need to stand out, but there's a ton of people who are six foot three, 250 pounds oh. there that, you know, and they all look good. So what do you think yeah. and how do you stand out? My approach was I walked in, saw my, got my number, which was, um, I, th I think they were taking people around eight in the morning. So I had this bright idea. I'll get there at six so I can get in. My thought was if I'm there at six, I, you know, it's going to be crickets. No one's going to be there and I'll be the first. And then, you know, they start at eight. I'll probably be able to get out of there by 10. I literally right. told my buddy, come back and pick me up at 10. I'm sure I'll be done by then. Mm -hmm. And I went like no part of me thought it was going to be serious. Well, when I got there, I think I got there around 615. The line was already around the door. They gave you a number. I still remember I was number 59. And I'm just looking around. And at the time, I mean, it was before my my, my steroid days. I was I, I'm 6'2", but I weighed about maybe 205 pounds. And I'm just looking at all these monsters and I'm just like, what, what are you? And I'm thinking to myself, you're a sixth grade school teacher. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> like, but I came all that way. So I was like, see the process through. If nothing else, you can say you did it. But not thinking anything was going to move forward seriously. So it was before the cell phone days, too. So mm -hmm. my buddy, when he came back to get me at 10 o'clock. I was still standing in right. the same spot. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how long this is going to take because it it took it was an all day thing. Mm -hmm. And so we they they funneled us in. They set us up into groups. And I mean, because think about it, they had to see every person individually. They had a ring set up in the world, and then we just went into a room, filled out some you know you know liability information, and then just waited. And I was, like I said, I was 59. The only thing, the only plan I had was I, that we knew we were going to have to do some sort of calisthenics, like jumping jacks or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then we knew we had to cut a promo. So I did have my promo prepared. And, but that got shot all to hell the moment I winked at Jackie. I, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I did know I wanted, wanted to stand out. I did not have planned winking at Jackie, but that's ended up what happened. And I, I, I believe, and I will always believe that that's what got me on to tough enough oh, yeah. because just the balls. Taz was like, yeah, you winking at Jacqueline and my, that we never got to the promo, but I think it, it, I think it showed them that, okay, this guy can be different. Right. Yeah. But you want to know, you want to know an interesting fun fact. Well, I do. Um, the next day. So it was two days. So I made it to, I forget what they, they boiled it down to, but the, the following day I come back and we're getting deeper into the interview process where, I mean, they talk, they, I mean, they one on one you mm -hmm. and to find out if you're going to be good in the house, because at the end of the day, yes, they're trying to find, um, you know, potential wrestlers, but equally as important, they're trying to find good people for a television show. Right. And so I had the people from MTV ask me, they came up to me and they said, do you want to be in, do you want to be a wrestler basically? Or are you trying to get on TV? And I was like, why? They were like, well, and this was back during the, the real world and road rules days. Mm -hmm. They said, if you are just trying to get on TV, walk out now and you, we guarantee you a, a cast spot on one of the next ones we film either real world or road rules. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, like, I was like, God, man, that not knowing right. that those shows could lead to challenges and not knowing you could, but at that time you really couldn't make a living off of, off of that. Right. And so I was like, no, nah, I want to be, I want, I, I'm here to, to be a wrestler and I'm glad I did, but I just think it's interesting that they, that they offered me, you know, a, a shot on one of those shows. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, I, People don't understand that those were math. MTV is not what MTV Massive. is today. It, this was yeah. a generational uh, time where MTV 
may have been hotter then than any other time. This is before the yeah. internet really popped off and social media. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I, I definitely remember that for sure, for sure. Yeah, well, that so, was back when it, you had an appointment viewing television. When yep. you know you had those challenges that would come on at nine, and you were sitting your ass down on the t on the couch watching them, not just you know pulling this up and looking at clips from them. So right. it was different. It was a different time, for sure. For sure, it's amazing how quickly two decades can change things up. A quick reminder that if you enjoy this type of content, if you enjoy these interviews, if you just want to support Side Scrollers as a brand, you can head over to SideScrollersPodcast.com and become a monthly member or an annual member. That support allows us to do these types of things, allows us to take chances, and is so important to the success of what we're building. So sit back, relax, enjoy this time, and once again, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and head over to SideScrollersPodcast.com. Thank you so much for your support, and on with the interview. So, so you get, uh, you get accepted into this, this process, right? Like, okay, you're going to go in the house. Yeah. What is What does the first day look like? How, what's the time period between the acceptance and then going mm -hmm. into the house? <clears throat> the process was one week. We had one week to go home and, and get our orders in a fair. Uh, wow. I, and at the time, I mean, I'm a school teacher. I'm a sixth grade school teacher. I have you know, class. I had two. I had a morning group of about of 25 kids and an evening group of 25 kids. And but I had a great I, I had a great administration who understood this was a once in a lifetime dream. Obviously, I don't think parents were too happy that that their teacher was leaving, but they understood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I so I had to go. And then during that time, I quit my job. And I had a car that I I knew my mom, my mom was sick at the time. So I knew regardless of how this went, I was going to have to move back and be with her. Um, and I also knew I wasn't going to drive from Portland, Oregon to Virginia. So I sold my car and I canceled the lease on my apartment. And I had to do all that in a week and then fly. And then they flew us out to Stanford, put us up in a hotel for two days and just literally ordering room service and waiting and terrified, not knowing what's coming. And then they loaded him because we didn't know who made it on. I mean, we knew who made it on the show, but we didn't know what the dynamic was going to be. And then they they took us to the house. And I remember when they took us to the house, Big made this big story up about how it was a, a historically uh, important house, how it was used in the Underground Railroad. That's ah, horseshit. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah, nah. And right. you know, it's just. But I understand. He want they wanted us to respect their house, right? But they, they everything they did, I realized, was a test to see how you'd react. 